Hi everyone, I'm Jafflet Kwawo and I am a cloud advocate at Microsoft based off Nigeria. I get to talk about .NET and AI, and it's great to work with Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors to see the amazing solutions that they always build. In this session, we have two Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors, Sashka and Rhythm. They have built a great solution which they would love to showcase to us. Hi, Sashka and hi, Rhythm. Hi, Jafflet. Nice to have both of you here. Would you like to tell us about yourself? Okay, sure. Rhythm, would you like to go first? After you, Sakshim. Okay, fine. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Sakshim here. Uh, I am a junior at Amrita Vishwavidyapitam, Amravati in India. I am currently studying AI, and I'm currently in my third year, about to graduate next year. My interests usually lie in AI and Azure technologies. Rhythm. So hello everyone, my name is Rhythm and I am a pre-final year student from Thapar University. My majors are in computer science and I am a beta Microsoft Learn student ambassador and that was it. Great, thank you for being here. I wanted to learn more about your solution but also share it with every other person who is currently watching this session. So please, can you tell us a little bit about the solution you built as part of the AI project showcase? Okay, so as we know that deep fakes are everywhere, they they are just becoming harder to spot. The first image shows how they have taken over the media and pop culture, making it tough to tell what's real. AI can now bring static images in life. As seen in the second image, turning paintings and photos into talking faces. While this is impressive, it's all being misused to spread fake content. The, the third image highlights another risk. Deepfakes can alter facial expressions, making someone look sad, angry, or say anything they never did. Imagine a fake speech from a world leader or a CEO appearing distressed. This could create chaos. Finally, face swapping technology, like in the last image, may seem amusing, but it's a serious threat. Scammers are using deepfakes to fake identities, manipulate people, and commit fraud. So deep fakes are becoming a serious problem for business. 92% of companies have already faced identity fraud and deep fake are making it worse, causing financial and reputational damage. In just two years, the use of video deep fakes has nearly doubled from 29% to 50%. Thanks to rapid AI advancement that make them more accessible and realistic. The biggest challenge? 44% of the decision makers admit that they can't confidenti confidentially detect deepfakes. Traditional verification methods are failing, making AI-powered detection a necessity. This issue is most prevalent in technology, 57%, and law enforcement, 56%, where misinformation and fraud pose serious risks. The financial impact is huge. Business loss an average of $450K per attack. With even bigger losses for large corporations, clearly deep fakes weren't aren't just a tech trend. They are growing a serious threat. That's why our project focuses on AI-driven solution to detect deep fakes. Yeah, thank you very much for actually highlighting this. And there are really big challenges which we have seen all around the world. It's happened a lot of times. The big part of this entire challenge is that it is very difficult to actually detect deep fakes. Well, while having our conversation, you told me that with your AI technology, it makes it lots easier for people to detect deep fakes and actually not fall prey to all of this, which is even more exciting. So please, can you talk a little bit more about your solution and how it solves the specific problems you have at mind? So uh, to tackle the deep fake threats, we developed a deep image, deep fake image classification model using advanced AI technique. Our solution leverages a vision transformers model trained on the open forensics da deep fake data set, ensuring high detection accuracy. The model was trained using Azure ML Studio, ensuring efficiency and scalability. After extensive testing, it achieved an impressive 97% classification accuracy on the test set, providing its reliability. Finally, we deployed the, this model as a web application, making deep fake detection accessible and easy to use for business and security professionals. 
Okay, so thank you, Rhythm, for that. So I'll not go on explaining the technicals about it. Uh, first, we took the, as Rhythm was talking about, the Open Forensics dataset. It's a large open source dataset having about 1.9 million images. So we divided it into ratios of 14, 4, 1 uh, for the training part, for the testing part, and for the validation part. We took deep fake images and real images, which are already labeled in the data set. We took it, we, uh, we took the images from Kaggle, and then we transferred learn on an already deployed model, which is called as Vision Transformers. And we, we trained the model on Azure ML Workspace because training is such a large corpus of data is not possible on the systems for sure. And of course, we require a lot of computing power on it. So Azure ML Workspace made it faster, and we were able to train the model in about two or three hours. The model which we create, we actually deployed it on Hugging Face, so it's open for access. I'll also share while demonstrating. I'll also share about where it is deployed, so you can also take it over. And just for the demonstration purposes, uh, we have developed a Django application so that we can test it out. And any of the users, uh, if it deploys, so if you want to test it, they can do it. So currently, we have a local deployment ready, and in future, we're planning to make it accessible freely for everyone. This is really great. I actually love the fact that you were able to utilize Microsoft Azure, which gives you access to all of these resources to deploy your solution and bring it to life. But I mean, for everybody that's currently watching this, they probably just want to see how this actually works. So let's not take much time. Let's dive straight in and see how it works. Would you like to show us? Uh, sure. Now move to our GitHub repository where we develop the model and deploy it from the Django application. Uh, as you can see, these are the papers read. Uh, our model is actually based on a deepfake model. is actually based on the vision transform model, as Rhythm and I were previously explaining. Uh, we trained it on 1.9 million images with the particular ratio 14 to 1 to 1. And then we have up uploaded it on a hugging face so that everyone can use it. Uh, we, require, we, we didn't expect, but we got an impressive accuracy of 97% on the testing set. And uh, the app demo, I'll just move on. The same application, anyone can use it. Uh, I'll just move on to the demo. Show. OK, so I'm working right now out of code spaces. So this is my whole, this is the whole architecture of the application. This is a basic Django application. So the app is already running. So I'll just, show, like, I'll just choose a file. This is the interface which tells us if whether it's the image is real or fake. I'll just upload an image to show you. So I'll just take one, like a deep fake image, and upload it. So let's see the predictions will change from real to fake. OK, as you can see, it changed to fake. And just for verification purposes, just try, try it with a real image. OK. Should go to real. Right, so this is a, this is just a demonstration of our application is going to work. Currently, it is deployed locally, but it can be extended to work uh, to work publicly. Amazing. I noticed two things while you were showcasing your solution. First, you had over 1.9 million images in the database. That is a lot of images for you to train this solution on. Secondly, I also noticed I had a 97% accuracy, which is mind blowing. For everybody currently watching, I think this solution is really a great place to get started. Thank you, Saksham and Redeem, for actually making this public and you know uploading it on Hugging Face. So anybody who wants to can utilize it and also get started, you know, continue building upon it and developing other code things. But I know you also told me that you want to make improvements to this entire solution. You want to make it much more better. So would you like to tell me a little bit about some of the things you plan to work on to make this solution even more interactive and lots better? Yeah, sure. So as I said, there's always scope for improvement. It's really not trained on 1.9 million images. And even for a system to support, any normal computer system to support, it's always hard. We require GPUs to process images, a lot of computing power, and also to keep it synchronous. If we are going to upload it on a website, to keep it synchronous to all the requests, we require large architecture and systems. So some of the future improvements which we have thought on is training on diverse data sets, like as the term. So people who are working in AI and ML, they might be doing it well. 
like there's always there's there's not a single model which can create achieve an accuracy of 100 percent so we keep on training it making it better every day we train with more di diverse data sets so the model can be improved as we move forward uh, uh as rhythm was demonstrating in the first few slides like uh, this uh, this particular solution with this particular problem is focused on videos like videos are being morphed might be president's video might be some actor so right now we are working on the image part but we plan to extend it to make it to videos so that our public platforms can use it to better combat these kinds of nuisances and uh, open deployment for public access so that everyone can use it everyone can understand like if they want just want to do a quick check if they have shown some image they have seen some fake news if they want to see if the image is actually correct if the person in it is actually there or it's some off image so open deployment is always encouraged so that we can give back more to the community and raise awareness amongst all. And at last, uh, collaborate with organizations, might be government, might be uh, uh, the public facing platform, social media platform. So we can get some more data, we can create better and still keep so that uh, we can get uh, more forward on responsible AI principles. Great. That's amazing. So what if people want to get started with this project? And I mean, you already spoke about making it accessible to the public. Maybe somebody wants to raise an issue or somebody has an idea and they want to make a pull request or things like that. Where do they get started? Like, uh, first of all, it's always encouraged. If you are just beginning, first go through some ML concepts. Understand what is the technology behind it. It's, there's also an other alternative, like you can just jump right in and just play around. But it's always better to learn some of the things. Then we have multiple resources available on Microsoft Learn. We can, you can just search it anywhere and get started. Get to know about the problem first. First understand the problem. Then try out, play out with what others are doing. And just try to make something up. That's, it's always an experimentation. I would say like whatever we made it, we didn't expect like it's going to achieve such a good accuracy. So it's always about experimentation and innovation. Great, thank you very much. And thank you for also sharing with us Redeem and Saksha the link to the GitHub repository. That is a link in the screen. It would also be included in the bio of this video. Uh, please be sure to check it out. Don't forget to drop your issues to make pull requests and help make the solution better. But we also want you to learn more, to learn how to use artificial intelligence. And we included a couple more resources for you. You can build your generative AI applications utilizing .NET using the link that's attached there. And also a great resource that's going to help you to begin your journey building generative AI applications. If you're really interested, I love talking about AI agents, and I think the building AI agents resource would also be great for you. Thank you very much, again, Saksha and Rhythm, for telling me about this solution and for coming up with this. And to everybody that is joining, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors always have the opportunity to build amazing projects like this. We'll be showcasing more of this project if you would love to become a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador and get the opportunity to also build projects like this, then be sure to check out the link that would also be in the description to see how you can get started being a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. Really, Saksha, any final words for people who are currently watching this session? So I, I just believe that this project is both technically impressive and highly relevant in today's digital landscape. Uh, just believe that, uh, just, be, just imagine a fake video of a world leader saying something they never did. Just it will going to create a chaos, right? So that's why a tool, a look, a tool like this isn't just a fun AI experiment. It's something that world actually needs. So moreover, the model is accessible via Hugging Face and a Django web app, uh, which adds a significant practical value. This will ensure that both AI researchers and everyday users can get benefit from the technology. And uh, overall, I just see this project as a meaningful and impactful contributions to the deepfake detection with strong technical foundations and real world applications. Great. Thank you very much, Saksha. 
Yeah, I would just like to add one thing. Uh, AI, some people are thinking it's very hard. People are not willing to get into it. But to be honest, being an AI student, I would just say it's not much. It's a little bit of mathematics in the beginning. But as you start doing it, you start loving it. So just get into, get your hands dirty, start playing around with it. They will start loving it. We already have the resources for you. You can go through them, get through any lecture and just dive right into it. Because AI is the need of today. And of course, join the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Community. We would, all three of us will be, will be greatly encouraging you and helping you out if you join us. Yeah, that will be. I would like to add more. So whether you are here to learn, contribute, or use the tool, uh, every effort counts in making the AI more responsible and ethical. So if you have any ideas for improvement, just feel free to experiment, collaborate, and innovate. Because uh, technology is only as good as the people who build it. So yeah, let's just keep pushing the boundaries of AI for good. Great. AI for good. So everybody join in. See you in the next episode of this series. Thank you very much and take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you so much, everyone.